Hi everyone, today we're talking about how to download photos from CloudCard online photo submission uh, using the, you know, an automated downloader. Now, um, as uh, with, it, you know, all of these uh, open source projects, uh, there are often uh, paid versions uh, from some of our integration partners uh, that, uh, that are sort of like the easy button for this. Uh, so uh, if you guys, uh, for this one, uh, Cloud Photo Connect from Vision, Vision Database Systems, you can get it either from Vision or for, from Color ID right now um, is uh, is the sort of the the paid option for this um, and uh, is fully supported and uh, you know easier easier to do but um, for those of you guys who have a great uh, IT staff and and, and uh, want to sort of DIY it um, this is a a good option as well uh, so we're going to go through um, just kind of walk through the project today how to get it set up and use it um, so uh, right off the bat, the URL for it is uh, it's the GitHub repository, and if you ser search for Cloud Card Photo Downloader, you should find it. But it's uh, uh, you know I'll, I'll post the link to the uh, repository um, in the uh, in this video at the bottom. So just go click the link at the bottom, and you'll find this um, this repository. So um, let's we'll go through the README page first off. You got the requirements. Um, if you want to, to use the uh, already built jar file, um, then you need to be running Java version 1.8, um, which is relatively easy to download and install. Um, if, however, you uh, want to you know, build from sources, maybe you're running 1.6, 1.7, you know, or some other version of Java, uh, you should be able to, uh, to just uh, download the project and, and build it from sources. It's a, a Gradle uh, project. So, you would also need to have Gradle installed in your system as well uh, to build from source. Um, and uh, of course, you need to have office level access to uh, Cloud Card Online Photo Submission in order for this to work. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, how to use this. Uh, first off, we download the jar file. This is assuming you're uh, not going to build from sources. So we just click here uh, to download the jar file. Now it says uh, it's going to give you a warning uh, that this is an application uh, and it can harm your system. Uh, so uh, in, in general, you'd need to be cautious when downloading jar files. Um, uh, so and only download jar files from um, from publishers that uh, that you trust. So obviously you trust us. So you're going to want to keep that jar file. Um, and we are going to grab it and drag it over into this handy little directory here. Okay, and then um, moving on, um, we need this uh, application properties file. So let's click that guy right there. Um, and um, we are going to uh, save this. Okay, now be aware that when you try to save this, it's going to try to add .txt to the end of application.properties. Okay, so just get rid of that. Just get rid of that, and then we'll go find our um, directory. We'll just uh, put it right here. We'll be fine. We'll save application properties. All right, and then let's open that guy up and drag him over to our demo directory over here. Um, that should be all you need. Um, you may also want to download um, git token .sh uh, it, uh, to uh, get the your access token. But there's a separate video that walks through that um, of how to uh, how to use that and how to create a service account. So um, let's go into the next step, which is configuring the application properties file. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this file up. Uh, you can open up. Um, your system may ask, well, what what should I use to open this? You can use pretty much any text editor um, on Mac. It's called Text Edit. Um, you know, or you could use, you know, as I'm using, um, you know, just a a more advanced text editor, but um, but yeah, any old text editor will do fine. Notepad is uh, on Windows is a great example or a great option. So um, so let's see. Let's go through um, and talk through all the different options here and, and whether or not what, you know what we need to do for those. So I'm going to actually move this over to this side of the screen so we can uh, I can walk you through um, the configuration steps. Okay, and then the last step we're going to do is is run the jar file, but uh, so the Cloud Card API URL, um, it's defaulted to um, inside the application. Uh, it's already defaulted to this. Um, so basically what you're looking at here are the defaults. So if you don't need to change them, you can actually just delete them. Okay. So the default for Cloud Card API URL is the, the, you know, the URL of the Cloud Card API, uh, the main production one. 
The only reason you would change that is if you were trying to use, you know, work against test. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we need to look at the um, Cloud Card API access token. Okay, um, that, like I said, um, that is covered in a separate video of how to create a service account. Uh, so I'm just going to grab the access token that I have here uh, that I created with that process. I'll link that video uh, in the description so that you can get that. Um, so uh, you need to put your access token there. Um, then there is the, the downloader delay. That's the next one. Okay. Uh, I gave you a couple of handy, um, uh, just sort of uh, for reference, uh, millisecond conversion. So this is 10 minutes in milliseconds. Here's five minutes in milliseconds. Here's one minute in milliseconds. Okay. Uh, the default is 10 minutes. Okay. Well, we're happy with that. So we can just delete this chunk. We don't need to override that. Remember, these are just override properties, basically. Okay. Um, the uh, absolute path to the photo directory. Now, there's no default for this. So what we need to do here is specify the directory where you want to store your photos. Um, and you need to specify the absolute path. Uh, now, we did create a directory already. In fact, uh, let me make sure that it's empty, which it's not. So let's, let's get rid of that. We'll move that stuff to the trash. So we got a nice empty directory to work with. Um, and then let me go into that directory. All right, and get the URL of that directory. Now, how, or sorry, the, the full path of that directory. If uh, if you're not sure how to get a full path, there's two, there's plenty of uh, um, uh, tutorials and instructions on how to do that uh, for Windows and Linux, etc. So I'm gonna just go ahead and paste that right there so that's where we're gonna have that and then I'll we'll put our UDF file in the same place okay uh, that's the next um, uh, the next option is where do you want to store um, the UDF files that get created so we'll store them in the same folder for now um, the uh, first part of the UDF file name is uh, is the next question um, so uh, the the end and if we, actually you look over here the generated file name will end up looking, if you just go with the defaults, it looks something like this, Cloud Card Photos, the ID number, uh, I'm sorry, not, not the ID number, the Cloud Card Photos, the date that it was run, including the time, dot UDF. Okay, so basically the date with all, you know, year, month, day, hour, minute, dot UDF. Okay, that's the default, and we're happy with that. So that's what the next, uh, like, three options are there, the uh, UDF. Uh, file prefix, UDF file extension. Um, we're going to go ahead and accept the defaults for those and just delete those. Um, the format of the um, date, um, time. So uh, this is, you know, in the uh, UDF file itself. Um, and there's actually an example file here, uh, which you can actually look at. Um, so Right here in, in the um, description section, uh, we uh, post the date there. So um, that's where, uh, that's what this is talking about. Um, how do you want to format the date of that? Um, and uh, we're okay with the defaults. So we'll go ahead and uh, get rid of that. And then uh, the next was the, is the, the batch ID date format. Okay, so here for batch ID, um, we just take the, the date, we just do year, month, day, uh, hour, minute with no um, separators and just pop it in there for the batch ID. That way you always get a unique batch ID. Uh, that's what, that is the one reason why you can't run this more often than once a minute because otherwise you'd end up getting duplicate batch IDs uh, and duplicate UDF file names. Um, so um, this is what's used to generate the UDF file name and the batch ID. So. Uh, we're okay with the default there, so we're going to keep that. But if you want to change that, that's where you would change it. Um, and then finally, uh, the, uh, the I'm sorry, not finally, but the, the created date format, uh, which is right here. Okay. Uh, so this one we're just doing year, month, day with uh, um, hyphenated separators. So we're okay with that. Um, and we'll continue with that. And then finally, um, the, uh, you know, downloader enable UDF true or false. Okay. Um, if you do not want to create a UDF file when you download the photos, then uh, you can just set this to false. 
and it will just download the photos and put them wherever you, um, in, in whatever direct directory you specified. And, you know, that handles, you know, basically importing into, you know, ID works that's using file system, uh, you know, the file system strategy and, uh, you know, sending photos to, um, to high or not, uh, to, to bank mobile, you know, there's lots and, and lots of systems that uh, don't need a UDF file. Uh, but if you're working with like a like a CS or Seaboard Odyssey, uh, for instance, uh, then you're going to want the the uh, UDF file to be created. And that is the default, so uh, we're going to go ahead and stick with that. So let me just say this. So so right here, this is the bare minimum of things that you need to to set your access token, your photo directory, and your UDF directory. Everything else is optional. Okay, and we went ahead and just deleted deleted everything else and accepted those. Um, those defaults. So let's get rid of that for now. And we've got our file created. Okay, let's go ahead and run our demo. So what we need to do then is, let's go back to our instructions here, usage. Okay, download the jar file, we did that. Download the properties file, did that. Configure the application properties. Now all we have to do is run this command right here, java-jar. And we need to be in the right directory. All right, Java dash jar cloud card photo downloader dot jar. Um, and let's go ahead and actually before we do that, let me just show you um, what we have uh, in our photos. As far as our test photos, we have uh, one approved photo, which should not get downloaded, um, and then. Then we have in the downloaded queue, we've got several photos, uh, but several of these have actually been just marked for download. Uh, for instance, Mary had a little lamb. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that and see if she's ready for download. She hasn't actually been downloaded yet, but as far as the application is concerned, uh, you know, as far as the front end is concerned, she's downloaded because you know the front end is set is designed set up to um, have the exporter pulling the photos out. So uh, again, there's another photo which is uh, ready for download. Um, so let's go back over here. We're going to run um, Java dash jar um, cloud card photo downloader dot jar. Hit enter. Okay, we see some um, you know log information come up, and there we go. If you look over here in that photos directory uh, that we created, um, we have um, several photos that just got pulled in. Okay. Now, if I go back and look at those photos, they're still, again, from the point of view of the application, they they were already, you know, uh, had already been moved out of the approved section, but I can uh, take a look at this photo and now it's it's marked as downloaded as opposed to ready for download. So those have all been uh, copied over. And if I take a look at this UDF file, um, I have uh, the description, there's that batch ID created, um, and then I have uh, down here ID number um, and then the uh, absolute path to the file. All right. Well, listen, I hope that is uh, helpful. And uh, if you guys have questions, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us. But, be, you know, of course, uh, as always with the open source projects, this is not a fully supported project. Uh, if you're looking for something that is fully supported, uh, you know, you've got options like uh, Cloud Photo Connect from Vision Database Systems. But of course, you know, we support this project and we maintain this project. So if, um, you know, if you do have questions, um, then, you know, as, as we are able, we'll certainly uh, help you guys out, especially uh, during the initial setup process. We're, we're glad to glad to help you all get started. So but hopefully this uh, this video will will take care of all of your questions. And uh, um, anyway, thank you and have a great day.